Amen. And that's a warrior. Because you need the anointing of the priesthood to continue on to kingship. Oh, God is good. Listen, there's so many things that are going on spiritually, physically, emotionally, all kinds of stuff. I mean, we are being bombarded in every area. And that's okay. It's supposed to happen. You know, something that the word says that the enemy knows that his time is short. You know, he does know his time is short. And he's doing everything that he can to bring destruction to mankind, to try and cause mankind to kill one another. Because his focus is bloodshed. Every, certain, every servant of Satan is associated with causing bloodshed. And Jesus said, shed the greatest blood in his own doing, even though he let the enemy crucify him. But he did it that he would make access and he would grant access for me and you. <clears throat> you know, the word says, unless a seed dies, it can't grow again. Amen? So in it, there's a process of death for resurrection. So in every part of our life, God is trying to bring something dead so he can have the place of resurrection. Every area. And in resurrection, power is a release and expression of the divine nature of God. And that's what he's trying to get through us. Because the world is looking. They're looking. They're searching. I never realized how many individuals never even heard the gospel of Christ. It's incredible. And that's what God is. He's commissioned me and you to go out wherever we are. It doesn't mean you got to go knock on doors. Hello. They usually run when they knock on my door anyway. So. But it's not about, not, we want to be led by the Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God and daughters. And we are entering, you know, there's a prophetic season being released that we are involved in right now. And it is vitally important, so important that we maintain that connection to the presence of God, to his word, and align our lives, our lives, not just a part of it, not just when we feel like it, but align ourselves with every area of our life, every breath, every decision, and every step with the truth of God Almighty. And approve everything that he approves of and disapprove of everything that he disapproves of. Everything. Would you turn to Psalm 34, please? You know, time is running out. Time is running out. There will be a time when there won't be no more time. Because eternity, there is no time. <laughs> oh, glory. Psalm 34 and verse 8. Would you read it with me? <clears throat> oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Listen, to taste is to connect. Because you can't taste without connecting. Then you will see correctly. Amen? Somebody get it? Because without connection, you can't see correctly. Your perception will be different. So when he says to taste and see that the Lord is good, that means you're connected. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. <laughs> In other words, when you are connected, there's a reverence, there's an honor, and there's respect to the Lord. We desire not to offend his presence. Amen. There should be desire not to offend his presence. If that isn't there, then there's not a connection. Oh, fear the Lord, all you his saints. There is no want to those who want. Fear, why? Because he blesses you, he prospers you, he releases all kinds of things so that you have abundantly and far above all you could ever ask or think. 
But it goes back to being connected because the enemy wants to disconnect. You're going to hear me speak about this more and more and more because this is end time now. At any moment, at any moment, you know, we're not perfect in, any, in anything. You know what I'm saying? Only he is. How do we know that any moment, bam, we're gone and there'll be many left who have not connected themselves to the presence of God as word and aligned with the truth. You never know. You and I are supposed to be living that type of life that any moment Jesus could say, come. Come. At any moment. And many of those who are disconnected will be left behind. Many. So he says, the fear of the Lord, fear of his saints. There's no want to those who fear him. Verse 10, the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Those, listen, when you seek the Lord, are you seeking connection? Yes. He says, come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. Who is a man that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil. This is a warning. It's called a tongue of offense. It's a tongue of destruction. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. He says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and do what? And pursue it. Listen, <laughs> this is a warning from the Lord. He says, man, keep your tongue from offense because a tongue of offense is a tongue of destruction. This is evil and causes disconnect, losing sight, and reconnecting to the carnal nature of rebellion and pride. I'm going to say this again because it's important. It, this is evil. Speaking evil is evil. That's why he says depart from evil. Why? Because it causes a disconnect from God's presence, and it causes blindness to come again because people lose spiritual sight. And then what is it? Well, listen, when you disconnect from the presence of God, you are reconnecting to the presence of evil. Amen. You are reconnecting to your carnal nature of rebellion and pride. Amen? Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears. Okay, to be righteous is to be connected, isn't it? And he delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saved such as they have a contrite spirit. The Lord is near only to those that maintain a humble heart and a grateful spirit. See, to be humble is to be grateful. If you can't be grateful, you got to maintain an attitude of gratefulness. That's humbleness. Amen? You know, if everyone went around the room today and shared, what has God done for you? Look at all the things he's brought us through. How can we not stand and say, thank you? See, when you can't do that, you can't become humble. And see, so there's an area where God desires me and you to maintain a humble heart and a grateful spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Listen, I was supposed to still be in prison today. I'm supposed to be dead. I'm supposed to be divorced. All of these things. I'm supposed to have lost everything. I'm supposed to be homeless. I'm supposed to be an addict. I'm supposed to be a thief, a liar, a deceiver, and a sinner. I'm supposed to be in hell. I think I have something to be grateful for. See, it's when we lose sight of where he brought us from and what he has done as when we become prideful and arrogant. See, you can't fulfill the will of God 
than pride and arrogance. And when we lose, that's why the word says, forsake not to assemble. Why does he say this? So that we connect. Amen. But what do you do after you assemble and connect? <laughs> you maintain. You stop fighting for yourself and you start fighting for his presence. If people will begin to fight for the presence of God in their life, they would maintain a humble spirit, a humble heart, a grateful attitude. But my goodness, remember what he's brought us through. How could we not say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen. Go to Isaiah 66. You know, there are times when it's called humble time. There, there's a time when it's called hammer time. That's when, the, that's when you allow the, the hammer to come out and crush you. But there's a time when it's humble time. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Isaiah 66. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? <laughs> And where is the place of my rest? How many of y'all know this is supposed, your temple is supposed to be a house that we're supposed to be building for him? It's not a den of thieves. It's supposed to be a house of prayer, a house of God's presence, a house of his will, a place of humility, a place of denying yourself. Because how can you say that you're humble if you can't deny yourself? Amen. In verse 2, for all these things my hand has made and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a what? Contrite spirit and who trembles at my what? At my word. See, God looks for those that have a heart of repentance. It's always on the tip of your tongue. Forgive me. It's always on the tip of your tongue. Listen, repentance comes before conviction when you're connected. See, you don't have to wait to be convicted to re ask for God's forgiveness. You know automatically. It's instant. If you've got to constantly look for conviction, and I'm not saying don't, because there may be things that you don't see that you're, you're asking, Lord, convict me, show me where I need to uh, repent, convict me in this area. Or if I'm wrong, convict me in this area. But when you are truly connected to the presence of God and his word, and you are truly aligned with the truth, you don't wait for conviction. You know. You know automatically. And you depart from it because it displeases God. If you truly are a real Christian, Christ-like, amen? Repentance is always on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> Again, it comes before conviction. And, and you believe. There's something that you believe in, and it's a law of sowing and reaping. You believe it, you know it. You know that if you sow in the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. You're going to open the door to the enemy. You know it. But you know that if you sow in the spirit, you're going to reap life. You know it. And you're not just saying the word, but you're believing the word is alive. It's alive. And it's not just a word written in here. You're to take that word because it's knowledge, and that knowledge releases a picture. And that picture should always be associated with Jesus before you and everything you and I do. See, God is saying, listen, it's time. One of the things he said to me, he said, so many are slipping away from the future. I said, what? He said, so many are slipping away from the future. See, I thought today's teaching was going to be humble time. And he said, no, it's slipping away from the future. They're slipping away from the future. Why? Because of pride and arrogance. Humble time is to deny Self-time. 
You should not allow self to take any time. It's humble time, not self time. When it's self time, it reunites. It reunites with pride and it falls under the rule of darkness. Not denying yourself promotes self. Does everybody get it? Well, I'm not promoting myself, but if you're not denying yourself, you're promoting yourself. So not denying yourself promotes self and reunites with pride falling under the rule of darkness. Humble time is denying self time. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, in verse 5. <clears throat> Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. <laughs> That's simple enough. You want to be an abomination to the Lord? <laughs> Do what you want. Promote self. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. Why? Because the pride so in the flesh. They react, they don't respond. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. <laughs> Go to verse 17. It says, The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Not step in it, not welcome it, not pet it. Amen. In fact, drive it out. <laughs> he who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before what? Destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So there's no contrite or humble spirit then. There's a loss of gratitude. Thank you. I think that is a slap in the face to the Lord when an individual loses the arena of being grateful. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart will be called prudent. And sweetness of the lips increases what? Learning. So we have to learn this, don't we? Amen. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. But the correction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his Mouth. <laughs> and adds learning to his lips. I'm going to say that again. The heart of the wise. Why? Because it's a humble heart. It's a grateful heart. Contrite heart. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. In other words, he has dominion over his mouth. He sees it before he releases. And adds learning to his lips. There is a process of awakening. This process of awakening, it leads to awakening moments or awakened moments. When the word says God draws, no man comes to the Father unless he's drawn. Before you even accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God began to draw you. He was trying to bring you to the process of awakening so you can awaken I know the pro I, I, I went through the process. I couldn't understand why things were changing in my life. I couldn't understand why I wanted to be honest. I couldn't understand why I wanted to depart from evil. I couldn't understand why I didn't want to have sex without marriage. I couldn't understand why I wanted to no longer steal or lie or use drugs or touch anything that was unclean. In fact, I didn't even know it was unclean until something started to happen. Because... There was a process of awakening so that then there is a moment of awaken. And in an awakening moment, as God draws us to each level, there's a level of awakenings in your life. 
There are things that you may be awakened to now, but there's other things that God is trying to bring you to awaken. Every awakening is a step into true reality and a step out of false reality, which is known as the temporary realm. So there are levels of awakening for each and every one of us. That is a process. Of course, we know that pride, ungratefulness, arrogance, those are things that prevent awakening. In fact, what they do is they put you back to sleep. Oh, yeah. The refusal to make the step will result in drifts and drifting away, sleep, and traps of the enemy, stepping right into traps. This refusal is called pride. I'm going to say this again. The refusal to make the step of this awakening will result in a drift a sleep, and a trap. Amen? What's the result? A drift, a sleep, and a trap. Refusal is pride. The result is sin, bondage, and destruction. Again, I want to reiterate that there is a level of awakening. God brings us to multiple levels of awakening in our life. Till one day the word of word says, I will awaken in your image. Oh, hallelujah. Losing the attitude of gratitude of what God has done in your life so far is a slip back into sleep mode. It's a slip back into your past. It's a process of losing connection with the future. This must be learned. This must be understood. This must be practiced. Losing the attitude of gratitude of what God has done for you in your life so far is a slip back into sleep mode. It's a slip back into your past and the process of losing connection with the future. You are slipping from the future. And again, this must be le learned and understood and put into practice. Ephesians chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 17. Somebody there? Ephesians 4, 17. Let's speak. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles, walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart, who be in what? Past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work in all uncleanness and greediness. But you have not so what? Learned Christ. They haven't learned this. They haven't learned the way yet. They haven't awakened to this. Or they've not stepped into this. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the... New man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. To learn is to put into practice. Listen, without mastering this level, we slip from the future into the past. The old ways of death begin to come forth. 
That's why people backslide. We are either connected to heaven. Uh, we, we are either connected to heaven and to earth. In other words, you and I are the connection between heaven and earth. Do you understand? Amen. Just as Jesus did. So either, either you and I are either connecting heaven to earth or connecting earth to hell. One or the other. And many people are still connecting earth to hell instead of earth to heaven. Why? Because they are slipping from the future. When you begin to slip from the future, you start to reconnect the earth to hell instead of earth to heaven. In Romans 8, 28. To learn is to put into practice, and without mastering this level, we slip from the future. That's why today's, today's teaching is called slipping from the future. It's important because there are many who were in the process of awakening, stepped into an awakening moment, and then it began to slip and begin to fall asleep in that arena and begin to slip from their future. And they start going backwards instead of forward. Most of it is the first cause is your mouth. Out of the heart speaks the mouth. Romans 8, 28. All things work to the good, together for the good, to those who love God. Well, he says, if you love me, you what? Obey me. To those who are, who are the called according to his purpose. Well, you wouldn't be here if you weren't called according to his purpose. Although there should be some here, but... They've gone the secular way today. <laughs> For whom he foreknew, he also what? Predestined. Everyone say, I'm predestined. To be what? Conformed to the image of his. There's the ticket. So everything that you and I are doing in this process of awakening is so we hit a place of awaken. Amen. This level of awakening in the process of in this process, so why? You and I can constantly come into that place where old is being taken away and new is coming forth. Why? So that you and I can eventually awaken in his image. That's what this is. You and I were predestined. It says predestined to be conformed in the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. Wow. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? Well, if God is for you, how can he be before you if he's not before you? Does everybody get that? Amen. Will the Lord be before me? Well, is he before you, though? Are you, are you setting him before you in everything that you do? So if he's not before you, things are not going to work to the good. And you begin the process again. You and I are predestined to be conformed in the image of a son who lived from the future and brought it to the present so you and I could live from the present to the future and from the future to the present. Amen? So that you and I would have a future. Yes. No longer living from your past. Romans 12. <laughs> Slipping from the future. Verse 1 and 2. That's why he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. And do not be conformed to the secular world, Amen. to the traditions of men, doctrines of men, 
doctrines of demons. But be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. Through what? The connection to the presence of God, his word, and aligning yourself with the truth. That you may prove that which is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Because you can't do the will of God without it. So we're to reconnect our thoughts and purpose is in hopes from the future where Christ is. That's what we're to be connecting ourselves to. We're to be connecting our thoughts, our hopes, and our future from where Christ is. Not from where your past is. Not from where your family is. Not from where your job is. Not from where your financial support is. From where Christ is. Colossians 3. You know, if we could really, if God would release how many times that the enemy has stolen something, the Lord tried to get to us, man, we would be quite angry. We would say, man, I'm just tired of being trampled on. I'm tired of being lied to. I'm tired of being used by the enemy. I'm tired of missing all the things that God has tried to release to us. Wonderful things. Blessings. Oh, he's tried to release so many things to us. And we've missed it. Think about it because the things that we've caught, how prosperous and awesome they were. Oh. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 and verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on those things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in what? Glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Hmm. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Now, it says renewed in the knowledge. In other words, people cannot be renewed without the word of God. There are many people proclaiming to be believers. Oh, I don't need the Bible. I don't read the Bible. Well, then how are they going to know the knowledge? How are they going to have something to align themselves up with to the things that please God and the things that displease them? They can't. You know what they're led by? Feelings. They're led by emotion. And those people are, are dangerous. Very dangerous. Because they'll turn on you at any time. And put on a new man who's renewed in the knowledge according to the image of God, of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is in all and in all. Powerful. Seek, connect those things which are above where Christ is. Living from the future to the present is living hope. It's active faith. It's alive. And it's awakening to the next level of his image. You and I are always going into the process of awakening, but the next one is the next step. Every step you and I take, we're making another step into his image. Does everybody understand that? I didn't say you had to feel it. You got to believe it. You got to accept it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every step. 
awakening to the next level of his image and character to express the divine nature with power, authority, truth, and love. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That's called respect. Respect one another and be clothed with humility. That means humble. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the what? Grace is the plan for escape into the future. So he isn't going to give the pride one a way of escape into the future. That person will end up slipping from the future. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Again, grace is the plan for escape into the future. Therefore, he says what? Humble yourself. Under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, he's going to pros Something's going to happen if you stay in that condition. You'll reach the next level. You'll go from awakening to awaken. Awakening to awaken. Awakening to awaken. And when that awaken happens, you step in. And you step into another part of his character and image and release your old stuff. And with it comes reward every time. Oh, yeah. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he what? For he what? He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? He's looking to kill you, man. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to prevent you from stepping into your future. He wants to cause you to slip from your future. That's his job. Ephesians 4.11. Slipping from the future. It's humble time. Do, 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 do. Ephesians 4.11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some te of teachers and evangelists and pastors. And for what? For the equipping of the saints for the work of outreach so people can connect heaven to earth. Amen? For the edification of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the anointing of Christ Jesus. Why? So we should no longer be children. That's a process of learning so that we can no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share. Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. In love. Wow. We must be, uh, in other words, there must be a, a will to learn. Amen. There must be a will to learn. You and I should not have to force to learn. There should be a desire to learn. If you don't have a desire to learn, you ain't born again. There must be a will to learn. What are we learning? The awakening process. We are learning the awakening process 
of escape and victory. Why? So we don't slip from the future into the past of sleep deception. I'll say that again. We must be willing to learn and willing to learn the awakening process of escape and victory so we don't slip from the future into the past of sleep deception. Sleep deception. Many fall into sleep deception and they slip away from the future. What used to be awakened is no longer awakened. It's fallen asleep. Ephesians 1. In verse 3, Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with what? With every spiritual blessing in where? Heavenly places in Christ. Is that past or future? It's future and it is present. Listen, if you're living in the future, these things are present to you. If you're not, you're living in the past, they're not present to you. Verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Well, if we can just comprehend some of that. So before he created the earth and anything, he already chose us to be here. At this time. Out of all creation, he knew that you and I would be here today. He knew those who would obey and who wouldn't obey. He knew those who would cooperate and wouldn't cooperate. He knew that you and I would be a part of this generation to return to the Lord. He knew. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy. Holy. Holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to the adoption as sons and daughters by Christ Jesus to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. We've been accepted. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, which is future and present. Amen? Amen. Future in the present. <laughs> we are waiting our inheritance and our new body. We're awaiting our new body from the future to live in the future forever. Amen. Amen. It's being specifically tailored right now. <laughs> Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Then one more scripture. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody there? Let's speak up starting in verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Now, that's pretty remarkable. He didn't say be God, he said imitate. And what does he mean by that? His character, his image, his expression. His responses, things that he would do. Oh, you can't imitate someone that's not before you. 
In verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let none of you, not, no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. If you're not willing to expose them, then you're accepting them. You're approving them and you're promoting them. For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says what? Awake! Awake you who want sleep and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is and understand the process of awakening. Awake and don't fall asleep. As many have already gone to that spell of carnalism. They've fallen to that spell and fallen asleep because of doctrines, belief systems, plagues, and pleasures of lust. They've fallen asleep. They've become lazy, compromised, and complacent. That's one of the things the enemy loves to do. Listen, where there is react instead of respond, you know that something has gone asleep. Amen? And I want to close in Colossians 3.12. Therefore, as the elect of God, the elect of God are those who are awake. If you ain't awake, you ain't elect. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. Are those the characters of Christ? Yeah. Bearing with one another, forgiving one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which... Also, you were called in one body, and be what? Thankful and grateful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Awake. Allow the process of awakening bring you to a place of awaken and step into the next level of the image and character of Christ Jesus. Amen? And don't fall asleep. Don't let your members fall asleep. Don't let that character fall asleep. Depart from evil. Depart from the things that would cause sleepiness to you. Amen? And don't slip away from your future. It can come any moment. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. We ask you to protect this seed again that's been imparted in us, that it may grow and take dominion over every part of our members and being. And let your name be glorified in everything that we do. And Lord, in every area where we have fallen short or fallen asleep, awaken it. And bring us to the process of awakening that we may step 
and to the next level of your image and likeness. And to Jesus be all the glory. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring up any tithes and offerings you may have.